Let's Design on a Photo. With Studio's exclusive Set Scale tool, you can be assured that window treatments and fabrics, as well as any furniture or accessories you draw or import, will all be to scale with the room in the photo. We have named and saved our file, Living Room, to our client's folder and we're ready to import the image of the room. Click on the Import Image button, which can be found here on the Quick Access Toolbar or in the Drawing Tools. Click again in the Workspace. This will open your documents and you can locate your photo. This photo would lend itself better to a legal size page setup so we'll click on the Raspberry icon, Page Setup, and change our paper size to Legal. We'll leave it in the landscape format. By holding down the Shift key and using one of the corner edit points, we can resize the photo without distorting it. In order to make sure that the drawing scale accurately represents the dimensions in the room so that we can add our fabric and any accessories, we need to change the drawing scale. To do that, we have to have some measurements. Obviously, we've measured either the width of the window, the ceiling height, or any other dimension in the room, and we can use that dimension with our dimension tool. We're going to use the ceiling height as our guide. Position your cursor at the ceiling, click, hold, and drag down to the floor. Let's zoom in, and this says that our ceiling height is 68.06 inches. Obviously, we need to change the drawing scale from elevations 1 equals 20 to the correct ceiling height. We'll use the Set Scale tool and position it directly in the center of the top edit point. Click with the left mouse button, hold it down, and drag it to the opposite edit point and position it again directly in the center. Do not click. Release the mouse and type in the measurement. This says 95.63. We'd like to be a little bit more accurate within about a quarter of an inch. We need to change the drawing scale back to 1 equals 20. So we'll click on the View tab, click Edit Scale, and type in 20. And we'll do the exact same steps. Let's zoom in this time see if we can get a little more accurate. Click on the Set Scale tool, position your cursor directly in the center, click, hold, and drag down to the floor and get it positioned exactly in the center of the opposite edit point. Release and type in the known measurement. And we're a little bit closer this time, eight one hundredths of an inch, that's pretty good and we can delete our dimension line. Now we know that if we want to add fabric, we'll have the correct drawing scale and can edit our fabric to look as it would in real life. For this apartment, we're going to add panels in the corner, in between the set of windows and over in this corner. Because this has a soffit here with mechanicals in it, we can't put anything up here, so we're going to install it right below here using a ripple fold rod. From the Elevations tab, we'll go into Draperies, and from the Tailored heading, we'll select a grommet panel. We'll do the one and a half width and we'll delete the hardware. We can also ungroup this now and resize it. 
Because we've changed the drawing scale, any images we bring over from the image toolbox will need to be resized. We'll use the same technique as we used on the photo. Hold down the Shift key and use the corner edit point to shrink it down to size. We're going to position it right in here. And again, we'll zoom in to make sure it looks right. I want to fit it right in here in this corner right underneath the soffit, so we'll need to make it a little bit longer, maybe a little bit narrower. Why don't we delete this one and use this that we've already resized for the other panels. Let's really zoom in on our heading. There's a little bit of an angle here, so we can double click and bring this up until it's just under that soffit. First, we'll add our fabric and change the line color so that we can then duplicate the panels. We're going to make these just plain vanilla, similar to the wall color. So we'll make it a little bit lighter and also change the line color. Let's zoom in and duplicate. We need to shorten this up a little bit because as the windows are receding from the foreground, the panels need to be smaller. Duplicate. And let's really zoom in on this one so that we can position this correctly. We'll just line up the edges. And one more over in this corner. And that's even smaller. So again, we'll use the Shift key and the corner edit point right underneath the soffit and let's make sure it's near the floor right about there. We'll slide over and we can shorten these up. We're not too worried about the angle of this because they will be behind the sofa but if we were we could double click to activate the red skew perspective edit points and drag this down a little bit. And looks like we need to come down a bit over here below the soffit. And once we have this in place, I'm going to add a fascia. And ordinarily I would use the polygon to draw this, but it's uh, such a small amount that I'm just going to use a line and make it a little bit thicker. So we'll start over here, click and drag it over here we'll make it about four pixels. And again, we'll change the line color to match the draperies. Everything will be the same. The draperies and the soffit. We'll get it right underneath there and our fascia. These need to come up. Because we drew those first, they will appear underneath the fascia. And the same thing with this one. Over here, we need to move this down a little bit. And maybe shorten these up. We don't want any little bumps. So once we have this in place, the only other thing we have to worry about is that the draperies are on top of the furniture. It's very easy to fix this with Studio's Photo Clip tool. We'll begin by bringing the photograph to the front using the Bring to Front button on the Quick Access Toolbar. The draperies are now behind the photo. If we use our cursor as a lasso, we can grab those and see exactly where they're located so that we know where we need to photo clip. We would have to do this area, the sofa, and the table, and a little bit of the chandelier and some of the lamp that's in the corner. Let's click away and we'll zoom in on the chair and this built-in bookcase. This is the photo clip tool which is right up here in the drawing tools and we're using it to trace around the area we want to bring in front of the drapery. So we're going to start up here, click, 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 oh, it's a nice straight line, we don't have to worry too much, click, over to the edge, click, 
down to the floor, back over here, and double click to finish the cutout shape. We don't move it, we don't do anything with it. Let's look at the chair next. Any area that has a curve, we're going to use more clicks with our mouse to create more edit points. Click, 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 and we're just following the outline of the chair. Click, 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 all the way around. Down to the legs. We're going to cheat a little bit here on this. When there are more intricate areas, such as a chandelier, you may need to do several clips and layer them on top of each other. And double click to finish cutting out that shape. If this moves a little bit, make sure you get it back into position. And we'll complete the sofa, the table, and the chandelier. Once we've finished our photo clips, we can send the original photo to the back again. We want to make sure that we're not selecting an area that we've photo clipped, so maybe down at the floor or up in the upper right hand corner. Click on the photo and use the send to back button this time. Now the draperies appear behind the furniture, behind the chandelier and the lamp. Now our client thinks this is a little too plain and would like to jazz this up a little bit. So with one click we can create a copy of this page. Under the Home tab use the down arrow create a copy of the page. And we want to create that elevation scale. We're not in the other drawing scales. Click OK. And we have the page duplicated and we can add a banding to the draperies, for example, that might make it a little more interesting. Let's zoom in on this one and we'll just use a rectangle. Nothing too fancy. And this is about an inch and a half wide. The client would like to match up the color of the chairs over here, so while this is highlighted, we'll use the eyedropper tool and touch the color of the chair. And of course we hope we'll be able to find a color that matches in a fabric. We'll delete the outline by clicking Line Width. And let's zoom in and duplicate this for the other panels. We'll put one on each side of this panel. And sliding over, duplicate it again or use your control key or the dragging it off technique. Now we have these still out on top of the furniture so let's use our lasso. We'll put the cursor outside the drawing and draw a box around the entire bottom portion of the photo where we know our photo clips are. We don't want to encompass the draperies, just the photo clipped areas and bring those to the front. And now we can show our client both the banded version and the unbanded version with one simple click. If you'd like to professionalize this a little bit more, you can use your custom tab, go to your templates, and create a legal size template from your landscape letter template. If you might be doing a lot of panels such as this, you can add them to your custom tab. Simply click on the one that you've created, right click copy, go to the custom tab and decide where you want to save this. You might put it under components and add a category called panels. And you can see I have a few things saved here. Right click paste and here is your ripple full panel right click again on that, edit information, and rename it Ripple Fold. And that way if you want to use this again you can drag it on. This just has a, a solid color fill so that you can add fabric to it if you like in the next rendering that you use it with. So it's very easy to save things that you've drawn in your custom tab. 
For an in-depth look at how to create an elevation rendering, design on a photo, create a space plan or a storyboard, please view the other segments in the tutorial.